What's up, family and friends? How are you doing? Welcome to this live broadcast and also to this, once again, to this beautiful day. And I want to share with us another important thing. You need it. I need it. All of us need it so that we grow together because we are in this circle of life and death together. And this, has, this is our eternal home. All right. So I titled this, The Worship and the work of God. The worship and the work of God. Every worshiper is ignorant of what they worship. You don't know that God you worship. Tell yourself the truth. In John chapter 4, from verse 19 to 24, you can read it if you think I am lying. I don't want you to believe me. I want you to research what I'm saying. I want you to to verify what I'm saying. Don't just believe what I'm saying. No, I want you to know that is my purpose of posting and making videos. For you to know, not for you to believe. A believer is ignorant. A believer is a moron. A believer is a sheep. A believer is a goat. A believer is an animal. Human beings know. People are supposed to know. That's why they have brain. They can judge. Anyone that tell you do, thou shall not judge or do not judge, so you will not be judged. That person is a deceiver. Don't listen to that person. You have to judge. That's why you have brain. As, as, of course, you judge me before you even join uh, this live broadcast, or before you you judge Facebook to be social media. That's why you are in it. You comment on posts after you judge them. You like posts after you judge them. You don't just close your eyes and begin to like posts on Facebook or begin to comment. No, you have to read or sometimes you only see the picture. You like the picture, you just click like because you judge. You cannot live without judging. You need your judgment. Another word for judgment is understanding. And we have to overstand, understand, not just understand. So use your brain. In John chapter 4, 19 to 24, the woman said to Jesus, I perceive you are a poor prophet. I perceive, I perceive, I perceive you are a prophet. But our fathers say we should worship on the, in this mountain. You remember that mountain where Jacob worshiped, right? He said, but the, the Jews say that it's in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the place one ought to, one supposed to, one should, one must worship that temple. Okay, Jesus tell him, my dear, don't worry. You know, time is coming when you will neither in, on this mountain or in Jerusalem worship the Father. He said, you know not what you worship. The Samaritans, you know, some of you, you, you don't know, I think it's in Second Kings chapter, chapter 17. That's why you will know where, that's where you will read and know why the Jewish separate themselves from the Samaritans. Samaritans are people that, that were brought from other places, I think by the other king of Assyria, I think so. Uh, one of the either king of Assyrian or king of Syrian or king of um, Babylon that went and brought other people from other place and put them in Samaria, in Samaria. So the Jews don't want to do anything. So those Samari Samaritans, they don't know the law of, of the Jews. They don't know that uh, Torah or that uh, Pentateuch or whatever they call it, that book or that law that the people of Israel worship. The people of Israel don't know the God they worship. That's why Jesus said, said the Jews know what, not know who. They don't know who they worship. The, no Jew, no, no Yahweh. No Israelite, no Yahweh. Remember, it's a story in the Bible, and uh, we, uh, you will get it. He said that you worship what you do not know, but we worship what, what, not who, who we know. He said, but the hour is coming now. It's when the true worshippers, we worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So what is the worship? You worship what you don't know. You are ignorant. You worship who you don't know. Every worshiper of God is ignorant of God. Anyone that is worshiping a God or gods uh, is ignorant of, the, of what they worship. You have to know who you worship. You say your God is Yahweh. Have you seen Yahweh? No. You say your God is Jehovah. Have you seen Jehovah? No. You say your God is Allah. Have you seen Allah? No. You say your God is Jesus. Have you seen Jesus? No. You say Mary is the mother of Jesus, a mother of God. Have you seen Mary? No. So you are ignorant of who you worship. You are ignorant of who you worship. If the God you worship exists, you're supposed to know that God. And you will not need to go to any mountain to, or to any temple to worship that God. If that God exists, 
and you say he's everywhere if god is everywhere what the hell are you looking for in the church in the mosque in the temple in the synagogue in the mountain in the camp you say you're going out for retreat you're going out for praying and fasting you're going to seek the face of god and you say he's omnipresent <laughs> think you don't know who you worship but you claim to know what you worship you are worshiping books you are worshiping material things you are worshiping your fellow human being when you go to that temple when you go to that church when you go to that synagogue when you go to that shrine that man that is running that is that is running the service the or the owner or the founder of that religion or church you, you you go to is the one you worship you don't know the god you worship tell yourself the truth and wake up if you must worship god then see god jesus said god is a spirit those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth how can you say a spirit is a him or how about her her how about her <laughs> why is the spirit you say no one has seen the spirit no one can see a spirit but you know the spirit is a him think if god is a spirit so god is not a he god is not a she if god is a spirit spirits don't have gender or do they okay if they have gender if there is a he god there must be a she god if god if you must worship him in spirit and in truth also you must worship her in spirit and in truth and that is the simple law of opposite where there is god there is goddess where there is man there is woman where there is male there is female where where there is up there is down where there is right there is left is a law of opposite stop worshiping who you don't know if you if you know who you worship you will not need all these denominations you have among you as christians if you know who you worship you won't be going to any place say you're worshiping the god you say is with you imagine you say god is with you and the christ is in you and you say you are going somewhere else and when you get there guess what you do oh let us pray let us wake on the presence of the lord here so you don't carry the presence of god as you claim God is not with you as you claim. Jesus is not with you as the Bible says. So you don't know who you worship. Get that. Read it. You say the true worshippers. But to me, every worshipper, whether false or true worshippers, they are ignorant of who they worship. Not just to me. Ask them. They cannot show you who they worship. They don't know who they worship. You see how they fight among themselves. They say, no, Jesus is white. Jesus is black. No, he has no color. Spirit has no color. There is no color. So when it comes to spirit, you become color blind. Stop. If spirit exists, it must have color. If a spirit exists, it must have body. There's what is called also spiritual body in your Bible. Which body will you use to go to heaven? They say this body will not go to heaven. It says it's a spiritual body. And the first Corinthians chapter 15 said there is a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And you say that God has you can see a spirit. Where in your Bible, some people say that Sansen parents say they have seen God. Jacob saying he has seen God. Even Jacob fought with God, wrestled with God. And you say nobody can see God. They say that Moses, Moses, God said to Moses, no one can see me and live. But before God said that, they said that God spoke to the, the Moses face to face as a man spoke to his friend face to face. But God said, okay, you will not see my face, you will see my back. Contradiction everywhere because they don't know who they worship, although they claim to know what they worship. The Jews always claim to know what they worship. Even today, Christians claim to know what they worship, but they don't know who they worship. Yet they claim, I know the God I worship. I know the God I serve. No, you don't know. You don't. And Jesus never asks you to worship him, and you are worshiping Jesus. And they claim you know what you are, who you worship, you don't. Then that's the worship of God. And you can also contribute towards that. Then how about the work of God? Okay. In John chapter 6, the people asked Jesus, what shall we do to do the works of God? What shall we do? We want to do, oh, we want to do this work of God. We want to please this God. You remember, these people are supposed to be children of Abraham. They're supposed to know what they worship. You get that? But they're supposed to be doing the work of God, right? They see the deliverers doing the work of God, the, the scribes doing the work of God, the Pharisees doing the work of God, right? Okay, but they still ask Jesus. When Jesus said say things, they could not ask, okay, what shall we do to do the works of God? In verse 29, Jesus said to them, to do the work of God is this, to believe in him who he has sent. Not to do anything physically, say, to believe in him 
who he has sent not to go to church, not to go to any temple, not to go to any synagogue. He said, this is the work of God. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, if you believe that no one has seen God except Jesus, according to John chapter 1 verse 18, if you believe that lie there, then hear what Jesus said, this is the work of God. The one, the last one that came, that came directly from God. It's not like Muhammad, it's not like John the Baptist, it's not like Moses. This one, they say he came from the bosom of God, from the bosom of the Father. Okay, hear what he said in John chapter 6 verse 29. This is the work of God, that you believe, that you believe in him who he has sent. Who has God sent? John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. He sent who? His only begotten Son. Right? So if you believe in Him, you will not perish but have everlasting life. Do you believe in Jesus? You say, yes, I believe in Jesus. You see, here many of them, they are even attacking me. I believe in Jesus. How can you say there is no Jesus? Who devil is using you? Devil is deceiving you. Idiot. Jesus is devil. Jesus is Jesus Christ is Satan. That's why his, both of them are called what? bright morning star or bright and morning star isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 and revelation chapter 22 verse 16 jesus is bright and morning star and that's what lucifer is so satan is lucifer devil is lucifer true or false so jesus is lucifer also satan is lion uh, jesus is lion okay um, first peter chapter 5 verse uh, verse 5 verse 8 and uh, revelation chapter 5 verse 5 both of them are lions so you don't know who you worship and what you what you don't so you're supposed to listen to jesus when you claim to be his follower who you claim to be your master your slave master jesus is your slave master he makes you slaves of christ right if you read um ephesians chapter 6 you say you are slaves of christ so you're supposed to be slaves serving your white men white men as you are serving christ that's what he says because bible makes you a good slave quran makes you a good slave that's why they gave you those books that that is slave manual the slave owners wrote those books to keep you a good slave you don't fight if you fight your slave master you are fighting god if you serve your slave master you god will bless you that's what the bible tell you that's what those holy corrupt book told you so jesus said this these signs will follow them that believe if you say you believe in jesus jesus said that is the only way you can do the work of god today the only way you can do the work of God under the new covenant, new testament, as Christians put it, is to believe in him who God has sent. Do you believe in Jesus? You say yes. Then Jesus said, these signs will follow them that believe. John chapter 16, 17 and 18. He said, in my name they shall cast out demons. They will speak with no language. If they will pick up serpent. If they, if they drink any little thing, it will not hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick the sick will recover are you doing that john chapter 14 verse 12 jesus said shortly i said to you he who believes in me the works that i do he will also do greater works than this will he do are you doing those works that's the only way we can know you believe in jesus that's the only way you can do the work of god Work of God is not building a church. Work of God is not building a temple. Work of God is not any act, uh, religious activities. No, work of God is to believe in who God has sent. And you believe God has sent Jesus. You believe God has sent him, right? You believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Where are those signs? I don't mean your pastor's signs. I don't mean your church signs. I mean you. You who believe in Jesus. Are you doing the work of God? The work of God is what jesus said not whatever you read in the bible not whatever your pastor interpret the bible to be not, not whatever your morning or daily devotional interpret the bible to be not whatever your priest interpret the bible to be is what jesus said if you believe the jesus of the bible then show us the works until you show us the works you are walking in another man's farm and claiming you are working for god it's like somebody take you to a land and tell you oh walk on this land this is land he said walk on it god will bless you you are doing the work of god and you clear the bush and till the land for him even help him sow the seed and he will reap the harvest it's exactly what is happening when you are doing that thing you call the work of god in your religion or in your church you are just doing it for your fellow human being free of charge 
like I said yesterday, you cannot rob the poor with gun, but you can rob them with God. Just mention God. The money they hid somewhere they, they refuse to give to their children, they will go and bring it out and say that sowing seed in the kingdom of God. So that when I die, when you die, come on, black people begin to learn from white people. White people don't do our things when they die. They do things for their living generations, for their living children. That's why they begin to build their rules. They begin to change their government. They begin to change their constitutions. The black people tend to die in whatever the, the, the slave master tell them. You have to be a bad slave. Bad slaves fight against slavery. Bad slaves fight against, uh, um, against bondage. Bad slaves fight for their freedom. They never stay. They never allow the chain to keep them down. They break every chain and run as fast as they could, and they will keep running. You cannot stop them. It is time you wake up, know what you worship, and do the work of God. If that God exists, know God, and do the right thing that Jesus said you should do. But remember, there is no such thing as the worship of God. There is no such thing as the work of God. It is all our work. If you must worship, worship the ones you know. Our ancestors worship their own ancestors. They know them. I know my parents. So if I start, if I decide to worship them today, I'm not doing anything wrong because I know them. I know, I must know who I worship. I cannot worship any person I don't know. Any person I have not seen, I will not worship them. I worship the ones I know. Thank you.